What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of Days, Stefan is a sick bastard. I'm just saying. Like, he's he's sick. Like, he basically fell in love with a person who's not even a real person. Like, you fell in love with someone's alter ego. You know what I'm saying? Gabby Gale is not even a real person. It's a fucking alter. And he fell in love with an alter. Even Vivian told him before the other day that he lost his fucking mind. I believe it. He lost his mind. Like, you fell in love with an alter. Not even a real person. You know what I'm saying? I felt bad for Chad. When Chad walked in, seeing them in bed together, I was like, oh. And, you know, Chad was trying to figure out what happened. Chad thinks Stefan brainwashed Abby. You know, that's what he thinks. He thinks that, you know, she he brainwashed her. Um, I don't blame Chad for beating the shit out of Stefan. I really don't. I would have probably did the same thing in that situation. Like, he beat him to damn near death. Like, Chad was fucking him up. I said, damn. He better, Stefan better be happy that um Rafe and Hope walked in when they did. <laughs> he was getting that shit. He was getting his ass knocked out. I said, damn. Chad was just like, bah, bah. I said, damn. Down goes Tyson. I was like, he was whooping his ass. I ain't never seen no ass whooping that bad. He was just beating the tar out of him. I was like, damn. I would have did the same shit. Like, seriously. It's ba- like it's sickening what Stefan is doing to Abby. Like, it's so sickening. Like, you're basically raping this girl. Because Abby inside, did like the real Abby, did not want Stefan. And she definitely didn't want him kissing her, touching her. So it's rape. Like, it's basically what it is. And I hope that when the real Abby comes out, she basically gets Chad off these attempted murder cases. Because you know he's going to be charged with attempted murder. So I hope she get him off those charges. Um, By basically, she can basically drop the rape charges because that's basically what this is. She can exchange dropping the rape charges against Stefan in exchange for him dropping the attempted murder charge against Chad. That's pretty much how I see this playing out. But it's crazy, though. Like, And Rafe and Hope were looking at the pictures at the police station and stuff. And, you know, Rafe, of course, was jumping the gun because he saw Abby in a black wig trying to look like Gabby. So he figured she lied on the witness stand and stuff like that. But that's not enough to get Gabby's conviction overturned. Even Hope had to tell him that, like, it's really not enough. And I'm like, exactly, because it's not enough. You need solid evidence to prove Gabby innocent. Like, you really need solid evidence. Um, Another thing that's sickening to me is the fact that Rafe refuses to sign the annulment papers for Hope to end his marriage to Hope. I'm so super pissed like that. So you're basically going to force this lady into this marriage until she loves you and comes back to you? Like, this is all just so abusive on this show. It's it's abuse is what it is. It's like, how do you force somebody to stay married to you that don't want to be married to you anymore? Because you fucked up and you cheated with your ex-wife. She don't want to be in this marriage no more. Sign the papers. Like, this fool literally took the papers and threw them in the trash the other day. I'd say he's a piece of crap. I never did. I don't know what it is about Rafe, but I never liked his character. He's been on this show. Rafe has been on this show for 10 years. Till this day. Ten years on the show, I still don't like his character. I still can't stand him. I don't know what it is. I just can't stand him. Like every time I see Rafe, I just roll my eyes. Every time I I cannot stand this character, and I haven't for the ten years he's been on this show. It's something about that character that's just so off putting to me. Like I never gravitated towards that character ever. I don't know what it is. I just couldn't stand him. Um. But Hope, she definitely could do better. It sucks that she has to work with the dude that she wants to get an annulment from. But, you know, as cops, they got to do what they got to do. And she's keeping it professional. You know, she's not letting their personal drama conflict with the case. You know, she's keeping a level head. I said, thank God. Because, you know, some people, they just let the personal get mixed up in the business. And that's not good. It is so funny watching Vivian, Kate, and Marlena be locked in that room together. This shit is hilarious. Because... Kate, every time she look at Vivian, Kate just be looking like she want to beat the shit out of Vivian. (laughs) And I can't blame her. Who the hell would want to be locked in a room with Vivian Alamein? I'm just saying. I would seriously cut my left ear off if I had to hear that woman's voice. I'm just saying. Vivian is so annoying. (laughs) 
Like she is a, a just a straight up headache. Like I would be in hell if I had to be trapped in a room all day and night with Vivian and no food and no drinks. Hell no. And you know what's fucked up? It's ever since Chad beat the shit out of Stefan, Stefan's all unconscious. Well, who the hell gonna tell them where Marlena and them are? Cause John running around town looking for Marlena. He don't know where the hell she at. I was like, they all trapped in a goddamn room. And the only person that know is I think Gabby and Gabby Gale, the altar, and Stefan. They're the only ones who know where where the three of them are. I'm like, well, somebody better wake his ass up and tell him. Cause I'm like, they they ain't got no food. <laughs> they ain't got no food, no water, no nothing. I'm like, damn, the only thing that they could survive off is drinking their own spit. I'm just saying, and you know. I couldn't be locked up in no room all day, especially with somebody I can't stand 24 hours a day. Hell no. I no, I'd be gonna whoop somebody ass. Um, so you know, Vivian was sitting there telling Kate and them that Abigail was the person who really killed Andre. Kate didn't want to believe it, which is understandable because she know she don't really know about the altar. So she don't really know about all that. But um I think she do. Can't remember. But anyway, um Marlena basically had to confirm that it is true. She was like, Yeah, it could be, it's a possibility. She was like, It is true. Um I wouldn't believe nothing that you know, she didn't want to believe Vivian and I don't blame her because I wouldn't believe shit that came out of Vivian mouth either. But with Marlena basically confirming it, it's like she ain't got no choice but to believe it. But she hopes that now that the truth is somewhere out there, you know, the truth is out there and people, more people are knowing about this. Hopefully that can exonerate Gabby. Speaking of Gabby, she is having a hard time in prison. I said, damn, she she met this girl named Diane. They started talking about Diane's boyfriend or whoever, Lou Reigns. Um, Lou Reigns, don't that kind of sound like Lou Ross? Lou Reigns, Lou Ross. Y'all know who Lou Ross is. Um, you know the you know Lou Ross who passed away years ago. He made that famous song, You'll Never Find. Dum 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 dum. A love like mine. Dum 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 dum. That was my song, Someone to Love You. Tender like I do. That was my song. Um, that's old school right there. Um, Lou Reigns, Lou Ross. But anyway, um, Gabby, I cannot believe how them girls jumped her. Like, that's how I love this because it's so realistic about what goes on in prison. Like, especially when you're new to the prison and you're green. That's what, you know, what we call new people. We call them green. Um, she's new to prison. You know what I'm saying? So when you're new to the prison and you don't know how to handle yourself in prison and stuff because you're not used to that life, they will try you. Those inmates who's been in, who've been in prison for years and, and most of them ain't never getting out, they're going to try to make you their bitch, basically. They're going to try to beat you up. Some might try to rape you. It's all type of shit that go on in them prisons. I've seen Beyond Scared Straight and all them other shows that deal with prison life. Prison ain't no joke. That's why I stayed my ass out of the prison system. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm not built for jail. I'm just saying. I'm I, No. Mm -mm. I'm being real. I could never see the inside of a jail. I don't want to see the inside of a jail. I've never visited anybody in jail. And when I seen them just beat on her, like, they just savagely whooped her ass. This episode was just basically all about ass whoopings. That's basically what this episode was about. Stefan got his ass beat. Now Gabby got hers beat simultaneously. While Stefan was getting beat up, Gabby was getting beat up. I said, damn. They whooped Gabby ass. I'm just saying, like, they just left her on that floor bloody. I said, damn. She was all the way fucked up. I was like, can somebody come help this girl? Where's the guard? But you know them guards in prison don't give a fuck. Them guards don't care. That's how it be in prison. Them guards be paid off. You know, the inmates pretty much run some of them guards up in here because they probably either got dirt on them or they paying them off, whatever, from a connection they got on the outside. But them guards don't be caring about them inmates. Like, they just savagely whooped this girl. I just sat back watching this like, wow. And in the same episode, Ari was, you know, wanting her mom. 
you know, and it's crazy. I was like, yo, I, mm, I couldn't imagine. And there's people that go through this in real life, like when they go to jail, like they got to learn how to protect themselves and, you know, deal with that prison shit. Gabby, you know, she going to be in prison for a little while until Rafe and them could get her out of there, hopefully. Um, I was just like, wow, they just whooped her ass. I said, damn. So anyway, it was good seeing Sonny and Will together with Ari and stuff, reading her a story. You know, Will brought her a little stuffed toy. Um, that was a nice scene between the two of them. You know, Will is going to investigate, you know, for the spectator and stuff. He's going to interview Clyde, Clyde Weston. I said, oh, hell no. I agree with Sonny on this. I wouldn't even talk to Clyde because Clyde, he not going to tell Will the whole truth. You know, Clyde going to bullshit. Because, you know, Clyde is, you know, he likes to play head games with people. So if I was Will, I probably wouldn't even waste my time. Because Clyde ain't going to tell you no useful information unless there's something in it for him. That's the only way you're going to get any useful info out of his ass. Because that's how Clyde do. Clyde a little shady little bitch. But, um, I love that scene, though, with them. I, I you know, I like how Will was trying to be respectful of Sonny by not bringing up Paul. You know, and apologizing to Sonny for bringing up Paul. But Paul, you know, I mean, Sonny was like, you know, that's your BF or whatever. You know, y'all dating. But Will was like, technically, that's not his boyfriend, though. Because Will was like, they're not exclusive. Like, they're not really in an exclusive relationship. I wish the writers would give Will back his memory. Like, can we just give this boy back his memories already so he can know everybody again? Like, I already knew it wasn't going to happen overnight, giving him his memories back. But it's like, they're dragging this shit along and it's like can we hurry up and move on because y'all just dragging this shit out it's like let's go um so leo brings his punk ass over there greg ricard i'm a big fan of him ever since he was on YNR's kevin um fisher but he playing a good role on this show but leo get on my nerves so leo came over to the kiriakis house when will was leaving and he assumed that will told Sonny about him working with Vivian about Leo working with working for Vivian Sonny didn't tell Will didn't tell Sonny shit Leo basically told it on himself because he thought Will said something I said you old dumbass fool because at first Sonny was all confused like what the hell are you talking about but then he admitted him working with Vivian because Vivian had a grudge against Victor and Titan and the Kiriakis she wanted Titan so he just had to reveal everything to Sunday because the cat was out of the bag. I say you old dumbass. He's so stupid. I was like, Will didn't even say nothing. He just assumed just because he saw the two of them together. I'm like, dummy, they share a daughter. Stupid. <laughs> I was like, obviously Will's gonna be around. Plus, Will works at the Spectator for Sonny's mother, so they're gonna be around each other. Duh. He wasn't there to snitch on you, stupid. You just snitched on yourself. Way to go, dumbass. No, oh, he's so stupid. Like you just snitched on yourself for no reason. But I'm ready for Will to get his memory back. Like, it's about time for him to get that back. But um, anyway, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. And I will see y'all later. Peace.